This is the River Thames, the longest river in England, which stretches 215 miles. Peter O'Croyd, a biographer and novelist with special interest in the history of London, calls the river liquid history. The Thames has witnessed the rise and fall of monarchs, the growth of arts and culture. Voluntarily or not, it is also the river of death. Throughout its history, the river has witnessed many tragic deaths. One of the most famous deadly events in London is the Great Plague, which spread from the black rat species named Radis Radis on ships from Amsterdam sailing on the Thames. On November 26, 1663, diarist Samuel Pepys writes, The plague, it seems, grows more and more in Amsterdam, and we are going upon making all ships coming from thence and Hembra or any other infected places to perform the quarantine. Unfortunately, despite the king's effort to control the plague, it started to encroach on the country. It began at both the docks outside the city and the suburb where St. Giles in the Field Church was located and spread eastwards. In June 15, 1665, Pepys notes, the town grows very sickly and people to be afeard of it. They're dying this last week of the plague, 112 from 43 the week before. In July 1665, King Charles II of England moved to Salisbury for fear of the plague. However, when cases were also found in Salisbury, he moved up north to Oxford. According to Ocroyd, the River Thames became the instinctive place of refuge, on which families locked themselves in vessels to avoid infection, which, however, still reached the ships and killed them. The plague reached its peak in September 1665. On September 19, the number of deaths from the plague was 7,165. On September 26, it fell to 5,533. The number fell gradually until October 31st, when deaths from the plague were 1,031. The total of burials from the plague in 1665 was 68,596. The town Gravesend, over 20 miles to the east of London, had its name because it marked the end of the graves for the plague victims. St. Giles in the Field Church is also a burial site for earlier victims of the plague. The plague ended completely in 1666, but sadly, it was because of another disaster, the Great Fire of London. This, nowadays, is the Museum of London. Back in 1666, it situated the Bakery of Thomas Farina, or the King's Bakery, on Pudding Lane, amidst a trout. After midnight on September 2nd, 1666, a fire broke out here and spread to adjacent houses in the neighborhood. If the plague spread eastwards, the fire went west. Samuel Pepys writes, By and by, Jane comes and tells me that she hears that about 300 houses have been burnt down tonight by the fire we saw. And it is now burning down on Fish Street by London Bridge. So I made myself ready presently and walked to the tower. And there, I did see the houses at that end of the bridge all on fire, and an infinite great fire on this and the other side the end of the bridge. It spread quickly, from Sunday to Monday, then Tuesday and Wednesday. It destroyed St. Paul's Cathedral and threatened to destroy Whitehall as well. The River Thames once again became a refuge. Pepys writes, Everybody endeavouring to remove their goods and flinging into the river or bringing them into lighters that lay off. Poor people staying in the house as long as till the very fire touched them and then running into boats or clambering from one pair of stairs by the water side to another. Once again, the Thames could not save them. They were burned from a shower of fire drops. 
situated at the intersection of Monument Street and Fish Street Hill nowadays. It's a monument to the Great Fire of London. It is 202 feet tall, which equals its distance to where the fire started. Inscriptions in Latin carved onto the sides of the column describe the construction process and the damage the fire caused. On the east side, a part of the inscription originally blamed the Roman Catholics for the fire, quoting, Burning of this Protestant city, begun and carried on by the treachery and malice of the Popish faction. It was erased in 1830 during the Catholic emancipation process. Another September disaster in the history of London happened on the Thames in 1887. It was on the 3rd of September that the paddle steamer Princess Alice sunk into the river in collision with the steam collier, the Bywell Castle. Peter Croyd narrates the event. The worst Thames disaster of the century took place on 3rd September 1878. A pleasure paddle steamer, the Princess Alice, was returning from Gravesend to London in the early evening of that day. As the steamer turned the bend between Crossness and Margaret Ness in the area downriver at Galleons Reach, now known as Thames Mead, she encountered a steam collier, the Biowell Castle, proceeding in the opposite direction. There seems to have been some confusion over signals and right of way since the vessels collided. The captain of the Princess Alice was heard to call out, Ease her! Stop her! Where are you coming to? Good God! Where are you coming to? The collier ploughed into the paddle steamer and broke her apart. 120 victims were buried in a mass grave on Woolwich Old Cemetery. Situated near Tower Bridge on the north bank of the Thames is the Tower of London. It was founded in 1066 and has served a variety of roles under different monarchs, but perhaps most well known for being a prison, a site for many tortures and deaths around the 16th and 17th centuries. One figure often associated with this tower is Anne Boleyn, the second wife of King Henry VIII. Peter Croyd writes, Anne Boleyn, dressed in cloth of gold, processed down the Thames for her coronation in 1533. It was said that the barges following her stretched for four miles. On that day, according to contemporary reports, there were trumpets, shams, and other diverse instruments, all the way playing and making great melody. It was the same river that carried Anne Boleyn to her beheading three years later. It was the same route from Greenwich to the tower, but the river was now the baleful conduit of death. Her ghost is believed to walk around the white tower inside the castle, holding the hat under her arm. Besides Anne Boleyn, the tower witnessed many other deaths. In 1554, young Lady Jane Grey, the young crown queen of only nine days at the age of 17, just here. The most terrible tragedy of all was the murder in 1483 of the young 12-year-old king, Edward V, and his younger brother, Richard, Duke of York. He was only nine. <laughs> then the two boy princes are brought to the town by their uncle, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, in order to prepare for the coronation of the eldest boy. Their sightings of them playing in the grounds became less and less frequent until they disappeared altogether. It is believed that they were murdered in the lower chamber, either by suffocation with a pillow or by stabbing with a dagger. The bodies then taken down the steps towards the back of the Wakefield Tower and hidden under a pile of stones. The very next day, they were taken and secretly buried beneath the steps on the south side of the Great White Tower. An important defensive tower on the inner curtain wall is the Beauchamp Tower which was used as a prison. Many convicts, especially of high treason, were detained here in the 16th century. The carvings on the wall still survive. Here are the ones by John Collins, Thomas Abel, and Dr. Lawrence Cook in 1540. Thomas Copham in 1555. Thomas Clark in 1578. Thomas Fool in 1567 and Richard Wood in 1581. Thomas Peverell in 1570. Thomas Meyer 
in 1581, Gigi in 1586, and another one by Thomas Pavel in 1571, and many, many others. Nowadays, the Tower of London stood still as a site of tourist attraction, but these carvings, these stories, these figures, are witnesses of history, of torture and death, in this historic tower on the north bank of the River Thames. Upstream of central London on the River Thames lies Hampton Court Palace, which was built in 1513 under the reign of King Henry VIII. It was used for royal residency, and more or less as a hotel for their guests. Although Hampton Court Palace does not have such a bloody history as the Tower of London, it has also witnessed several deaths. After executing its second wife, Anne Boleyn, King Henry VIII married Jane some more. His thirst for a son was finally satisfied when Jane gave birth to the future Edward VI. Not long after the palace could celebrate the new heir, Merced Mound over her death. Jane died two weeks after the birth of her son. This is the haunted gallery in the palace. In late 1541, the fifth wife of King Henry VIII, Catherine Howard, was imprisoned at Hampton Court for adultery before being beheaded at the Tower of London. Legend claims that she escaped the guards and ran through this gallery to beg the king for her life, but she was recaptured. Her ghost is believed to still haunt this place. Another part of Hampton Court Palace is the Hampton Court Garden. In 1689, England had a joint monarch, William of Orange and his wife, Queen Mary II. They fell fond of Hampton Court Palace and resided here. William wanted to refurnish the palace to sweep away all traces of the Tudor. However, after the death of his wife, he lost interest in the renovations. Right here in his garden, in 1702, he fell from his horse and died. Stretching 215 miles, with 134 bridges along its length, the River Thames, McCroy describes, has the power to hurt and to kill. In 2013, there were 15 accidental deaths in the Thames, mostly because of sleeping, swimming, or alcohol. In July 2013, a public relations executive leapt to a death from a bridge over the Thames after becoming dependent on a powerful truck she was taking to tackle her alcoholism. Death on the Thames are also portrayed in literature and film. This is Vauxhall, an area to the west of the city of London. In Vauxhall, a book by Gabriel Capdemossi, the protagonist's childhood friend, Thaddeus, drowned in the Thames in this poor neighborhood, bringing a solemn mood to the story. The writer described the Thames. The way down was dank and slippery, and I was always down there when it opened on to a bend in the river. The water came in and out, and slapped with the tide onto the steps, a drop below a shoulder of mud and shingle. There were old wooden posts sticking out of the mud. It smelled old going down, which was one reason for going. It was where you grew up. Everyone said, don't go, but the river pulled you. You just found yourself there, where no one ever looked for you. In the opening of Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens, the assumed body of John Harmon is also found in the Thames, which created much twist in the novel. This is the Millennial Bridge, which is also featured in the fifth Harry Potter film. The Death Eaters fly around the bridge from the magical world, flip to destroy it and kill many innocents. In the river, water flows from source to sea. Life also flows from birth to death. The River Thames has witnessed many deaths in the history of London, either in the river or by the river. Remnants of human bodies still lie under the water, and the spirits are haunting stories, myths, and legends. The River Thames is truly liquid history.